I'm at the Ethiopian Kenyan border, about to cross into Kenya for the first time. We are waiting right now to be able to get the permit to cross over. So this is a little like, um, I don't know, kind of like bar, restaurant, waiting area right in the middle of the zone. Where is this? Yeah, it's, it's over there. Ethiopia. Yeah, it's a very smart town. Are you Ethiopian or Kenyan? Ethiopia is a Kenyan. Are you? Are you Ethiopian? Yeah, it's Uba. Okay. It's Ashley. I had just been traveling in Ethiopia for a few weeks and was on my way to Kenya by land. I was at the border crossing called Ellaret. I thought it was going to be a simple and easy crossing, but little did I know that crossing at this particular border was going to bring me lots of headaches. We were waiting for hours to get permission to cross when we finally got word that the Kenyan government wasn't going to allow anyone to cross that day. The biggest Kenyan presidential election was taking place the next day. Just my luck. This border sits on Lake Turkana, home to some of the biggest Nile perch fish. The guy who I met earlier showed me their morning catch. That's huge. Wow. This group of people from the Dasanets tribe had to go back to their hometown in Ethiopia, and I had to pitch a tent for the night. This brings me to two important tips that I have for you. For anyone deciding to travel through Kenya, avoid traveling during a presidential election. And then number two, do not cross at Ellaret border. You'll totally understand why later on. Meanwhile, the fish was delicious and we headed down to Lake Turkana to check it out. Finally, the next morning, I met my driver David along with my guide Sumsum, and we were in Kenya and on our way. We headed to Loyangalani, the center town in the middle of the remote tribes. It was a 12 hour drive. The plan of this remote area was to meet with the various tribes, learn about the cultures, and do a couple of photo shoots. For those that don't know, one of my hobbies is travel and culture photography. I was supposed to be here for a week, but as you will find out, again, the border crossing becomes the issue. I am in Loyangalani, which is the city that is in the middle of the tribal areas in Kenya. A very, very small town to show you. Yeah. Did you want to talk and tell? Yeah, we talked together. We talked. <laughs> <laughs> we talked together. So what tribes do we have here? We have Tukana, Samburu, Rendile, and Molo. Yes. Many tribes. Many tribes. Yes. Four tribes. Four tribes. Yes. And this is the town. The town. Mm-hmm. Yes. You can get fish. 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 Uh-huh. You can get cross. Even me, I need this one of yes. yours. You need one. this? Yes. Give me this one. <laughs> My name is Pauline. Pauline? Mm. Nice to meet you, Pauline. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Asante. 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 <laughs> The Turkana tribe are one of the largest nomadic communities in Kenya. They live in a region that has a dry, semi-arid climate with a volcanic rock landscape and sits on the edge of Lake Turkana. The women are easily distinguished by their elaborate and layered beaded necklaces, which have numerous meanings anywhere from social status to wealth to the all telling of certain occurrences that have happened in their life. The men are responsible for supplying the beads to the women of their families and make it a priority to ensure that they are well adorned. The Turkana pride themselves on keeping some of their traditions alive. They depend on livestock for meat, milk, and income, and depend on the sparse vegetation for fire, wood, and to build their homes. Here, the women are cleaning their hand-carved wooden jugs called akaram, which they use to carry milk and water. The top of the container is used as a cup to drink from. 
The women are lighting smaller pieces of wood and then using the smoke to clean the insides and rid the container of any sour milk residue. the fence that they're building to protect the palm tree from the animals, from the goats, from eating the palm. It's very important to them because it's what thatches the roof and it produces fruit for them to eat. After the dancing and singing, we had hot tea to warm up and get some relief from the strong wind. The Turkana have been introduced to the modern world, and some even go to school. It was so cool that this woman spoke a bit of English, so we were actually able to communicate one-on-one, -on -one, which was really, really nice. Day, we were introduced to some of the people from the Rindili tribe. David! <laughs> Unfortunately, our time was cut short because of my passport issue caused by crossing the illiterate border. The more we spoke to people about it, the more we realized we had to get the problem taken care of as soon as possible. I had to leave Loyangalani early because it never got a stamp, an entry stamp in my passport. When I crossed by land from Ethiopia into Kenya, there was no place to get my passport stamped. And that's a problem. But now I'm having to leave uh, Loyangalani, the tribal areas, and travel onto Marsabet. And we don't know where I can get a passport stamp. We just know that I cannot continue on to Nairobi until I get one. Last night, I arrived in Marsava after a 10 hour journey and I spent all morning trying to get a local SIM card and figure out this entry stamp situation. And it seems like I have to go back north to a different border in order to get my entry stamp. Everywhere you, I go, I've been getting a different answer. In Layangalani, they said, come to Marsabit. In Marsabit, they said, I have to go to my alley. I was able to withdraw money this morning for the first time since I've been in Kenya, which that's a plus. Everything is pole pole in Kenya, which means slowly, slowly in Swahili. We're on our way to go do a photo shoot with the Rindili and Samburu. Because of the election, the curfew is at six o'clock that we are not allowed to leave Marsabit and come back in. We have to be inside Marsabit by 6 p.m. Yesterday, we arrived at 6.30 and I had to pay a bribe to get through. So today, we are trying to avoid that and go ahead and make sure that we can get back through. What'd he say? <laughs> okay. okay. He said okay? Yeah. What time did you tell him? 500. 500. 500 to pass? 500 is in Kenya. 
Five hundred shillings, Kenya. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's corruption, man. They're corruption, Kenya. I'm here with some Rindili warriors. They're called Moran, which means they are warriors. Yes. Yes. They are warriors. Warriors. Rindili. <laughs> Rindili. Rindili's military. <laughs> they hunted for a month. Right? You yes, said a month, a month. They stayed in the bush for a month yeah. in order to get this. Means that they have killed a lion. Yes. Which means they're very, very strong. Yes. Who makes this? The women? Women. The women make this? Yes. Okay, and then they get these from the market or yes. what? No, even this one is for women. The women make it? Men. men can make this. Oh, and the this one's for men. Oh, yeah? There's women for this and men for this. As with the Turkana, the Rindili's jewelry holds a lot of importance. Both men and women are beautifully adorned in colorful beads, shiny metal, and Chinese imported flowers. Their jewelry is so important to them that some of their outfits even have a mirror to make sure it's all in place. A Moran's jewelry can tell his age, which clan he is from, and how brave he is. A Moran will live in the bush for a lengthy amount of time learning certain skill sets, including how to fight their enemies, whether a man or animal, whichever one, attacks their cattle. How do you say hello in your language? <laughs> Anabea. Anabea? Yes. Uh-huh. Anabea. Nebe. Uh -huh. Greeting. Okay. Say hi to everybody in the world. Nebe. 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 Yes. I got these from Ethiopia. Ethiopia, Ethiopia. Hammer tribe, Abore. In their culture, a metal bracelet like the ones I'm wearing means that you have killed an enemy. So they were obviously very impressed with my collection. <laughs> Hi, David. The photo shoot turned out to be more fun and laughs than anything. The sun was setting fast and the wind was way too strong. But it was a great break before I had to set back out on the road in the morning to go back north to the legal border where I finally got my stamp. Do not make the same mistake as me. Always land cross to and from Kenya at the Moyale border. I made it. I got my stamp. Of course, I can't film inside. We got a little bit of slack. Mirror. Otherwise, our old luggage is in the car. You left the key in the car? Yes, we left it. The driver. David, he left it. David, uh. you locked the key in the car? The key is locked in. <laughs> so you're going to use a stick to try to get in? Yeah. Hey. I just got my visa stamped. It's off to a good day. And now I'm at Safari Comb trying to get my phone card. And then I'm going to hop on a bus. I'm leaving all of the people I've been traveling around with. And I'm gonna get on a bus and head to Nairobi. It'll be a 12 hour bus ride. I've been in here for like an hour. <laughs> you pay me, okay? So, this election has held us up this entire trip from me having to stay an extra night not being able to cross the border because of the election and now a bus can't leave today because of the election and all these other things roadblocks and everything that i've gone through the current president has been in office for the last 10 years so now this is the moment they're about to finally announce the winner and hopefully kenya will get back to normal <laughs> and i can travel
Despite all the roadblocks and delays, I had some beautiful experiences with incredible people. They say hard roads lead to beautiful destinations. And there's more to come in the next video. Stay tuned.